Hi, I'm Dave Chung, Chief Medical Executive at Children's Health and UT Southwestern Medical Center. Welcome to the In the Know video series. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have today a special guest, Dr. William Harbour. He's a professor and chairman of Department of Ophthalmology at UT Southwestern Medical Center. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. So great to have you. It's been uh, great to be invited, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Great. Not only as a busy professor and the chair at UT Southwestern, but you, you have a passion in the pediatric space and the ocular oncology program. I do, absolutely. I, I am uh, an ocular oncologist myself, which means that I am an ophthalmologist who specializes in the care of patients with tumors in their eye. And one of the most important of these tumors is one that we see in young children called retinoblastoma. So it's been a passion of mine taking care of these patients for almost 30 years now. When I came to Children's and UT Southwestern uh, two and a half years ago, I brought some new uh, techniques here, in particular something called intraarterial chemotherapy, which is the state of the art for treatment of retinoblastoma. It allows many of these children to avoid removal of their eye and allows many of them to keep much better vision than they would have otherwise. There's only a small handful of centers in the entire United States that can do this procedure that we call IAC uh, for short. So when I came here, we put together a team here at Children's to do the IAC. And this is something that requires a multidisciplinary team, not just of ophthalmology, but of neurosurgery, pediatric oncology, and the teams, the support team surrounding us that have made this truly one of the best centers in the country. Frankly, it's the best team I've ever worked with uh, in this space. That's great. I mean, it sounds very involved with a number of specialists and different expertise. Can you elaborate a little bit? Like when you're saying different uh, team members all came together to sure. really uh, launch this IAC? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, the, the standard of care when I got into medicine was that most of these children had their eyes removed. And sometimes this, is, uh, this cancer can involve both eyes. About 40% of the time it involves both eyes. What this allows us to do is to actually put the chemotherapy directly into the eye. A catheter is placed into the large artery in the leg and very carefully uh, directed up to the artery that goes directly into the eye. And then the chemotherapy is delivered directly into the eye. So you can get a very effective dose of chemotherapy in the eye with very little getting into the body. This requires, uh, number one, an ophthalmologist and ocular oncologist like myself to make the correct diagnosis because not every child that you think has retinoblastoma actually has retinoblastoma. They may have a retinal detachment or a cataract or something that looks like retinoblastoma, but it's not. And then you need a pediatric oncologist who can prescribe the chemotherapy and to monitor them for side effects and their blood count and so forth. But then crucially, you need a very specially trained pediatric neurosurgeon, in particular an endovascular neurosurgeon, somebody who's had particular training in doing what I described, feeding these little catheters into blood vessels. And, you know, when you get to the eye, you're really in the brain. So you really have to have a neurosurgeon to do this. And then, of course, there's a whole support team around us. So it, it truly is a multidisciplinary effort. So with this intricate, like, very exact position of the catheter and delivery, literally and locally, what has the outcome been like? I mean, is it a profoundly changing for the better of uh, these infants and children? Like you said, you get a higher dose, but uh, in a much smaller volume. So we don't really see uh, any of those um, side effects that we saw with, with traditional uh, chemotherapy. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, there, there are still, unfortunately, cases where it, the, the tumor is so advanced by the time we find them that there are still some patients that the safest and best thing to do is remove the eye. But the proportion of patients that need to have their eye removed now has dropped from over 50% when I started in this field 
to about 5%. So it's dramatically changed the number of kids that can keep their eye, but also um, be able to have some vision in the eye and not be left with, um, with some of the side effects of older therapy. How did you get into uh, interest in ocular um, um, oncology? My career has, has really combined uh, patient care and research. I've had a research laboratory also for over 25 years. And so it's been really rewarding to learn from the patients, what are we not doing well? What do we need to be able to do better? And then go to the laboratory and try to discover something that we can then bring back to patients. And we've been very successful doing that over the years. Is there any some other exciting uh, advances from your lab, if not your colleagues in the field of pediatric ophthalmology you'd like to share? Another really um, important advance in retinoblastoma that is kind of a complement to the IAC is that we can now inject chemotherapy directly into the eye when we're in the operating room doing the exam under anesthesia, okay? So this was felt to be- Into the globe. Into the globe, directly into the globe. And, you know, when I was in training, this was uh, kind of a no-no. You never stick a needle in the eye of a patient who might have retinoblastoma. But what we've learned over the last 10 years or so is that there are ways that you can do this very safely. You know, you can use a very, very tiny needle. And what's crucial is that we simultaneously apply cryotherapy or freezing treatment as we're inserting the needle. And so what that's done, it, it can't replace the IAC, but what it does is it allows us to cut down on the sessions of IAC. It allows us to save some eyes that we, we couldn't save with IAC alone because they had a lot of cancer cells floating in the inside of the eye and the vitreous. And it leads into the other part of your question, what's happening in the laboratory. It allows us to deliver new types of agents into the eye that we couldn't do before. What's happening in the research lab and in, in my lab and more generally in the field is to try to identify more targeted therapies for retinoblastoma. How has your uh, overall experience working in partnership with UT Southwestern Children's Health been like for your own ocular oncology program, as well as many of your great pediatric ophthalmologists. Not every good department of ophthalmology is associated with a great children's hospital. In fact, I would say it's a minority uh, that, are, that have a great children's hospital. So that was a huge attraction to me to have Children's Medical Center Dallas to be the partner in what we're trying to do here, both clinically and in research. I've um, focused mostly on retinoblastoma, but I see children and my team uh, sees children with all kinds of other tumors in the eye related to, for example, neurofibromatosis and tuberous sclerosis uh, and uh, von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. And we have world experts in every one of these uh, conditions here, and we're treating them with state-of-the-art medications that Frankly, some of them were actually discovered right here and developed here, like the drug for von Hippel-Lindau uh, syndrome. So it was a huge part of my decision to come here, and it's really been a game changer for my own professional growth. Well, we're uh, so grateful to you for being here and your amazing leadership and all the really great talent and uh, leaders in your department and what you do for our children's and, and the rest of the community. So thank you for spending some time with us. and. Uh, and helping us to learn more about the amazing stuff that you do. Thank you, Dr. Chung, for the invitation to be here. 